Today we're sorting out a complete mess of a solar and EV charging install and preparing for the biggest domestic electrical inspection we've ever done. Here, ducky ducky duckies. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> The labelling on these boards has been scrawled in Sharpie and edited several times over the years, but it still wasn't accurate. So this is the main board where the three-phase supply comes in and the first of seven distribution boards. There are a few alarm bells starting to ring. This loose armoured cable should be clipped up properly. These solar edge CTs have just been twisted up. Doesn't speak very much for the original solar edge installers. The property was inspected by some other electricians in 2018. While some of their observations seem correct, others seem to be downright ridiculous. I usually find it easier to take the doors off these eating boards before taking the main cover off. It stops you losing balance and tripping a circuit breaker by mistake. This is always my favorite part of any job, seeing how neat the previous installers have left the board. Cue the shocked or confused face as I peer inside. These are the three main fuses that protect the whole supply cable coming in, L1, L2, L3. This is DB2, which is for local lighting and sockets. Again, there are a few anomalies here, such as one circuit being labeled as unknown. So this is one of the first things that was coded. This was coded as a C1. You can stick your fingers in there. There is no access to live parts though, really. So I would say it's probably a C2, but it's Unless still you're pretty Unless your fingers dodge. and your fingers are like foot long. <laughs> Unless you're um, Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> Lee appears to have discovered the survivor from 101 Dalmatians who has been living it up off royalties here in this lovely farm. Nestled among the beams high out of the reach of any normally built electrician lies DB3. The new barn circuits are fed from here. Let's find out what wonders lay inside. Well, it's no Banksy, but I've seen a lot worse. It does bug me when people mark up the MCBs with a sharpie though. Let me know in the comments if you're a graffiti artist responsible for this kind of work. Somewhere hidden in this kitchen lies DB4. Pause the video here and let us know in the comments where you think it is. Well done to those who guessed correctly. What a clever way to hide a consumer unit. This board was actually a lot neater than what I thought it would be and there's a spare cable in the end if anyone's wondering what that is. One of the C2s that I do agree with on the previous EICR is this, use of a thin bit of bare copper to link the two neutral bars. This could potentially overheat and cause a fire. Why has it got holes in it? Is that for air or for ventilation? It must be, yeah. but then it's not, oh, not even on. So, dodge. so it's coming up for brunch and Jordan's finally decided to get the tools out. So the previous electricians have coded some C2s in this board and I just want to have a look at it and see whether I actually agree with them or not. This loose cable in the back of the consumer unit has been coded C2. I don't think it justifies a code, especially if it's dead. What do you think, guys? So there are some C2s that I definitely disagree with on their report, but what I would have C2'd or, or at least C3'd, which they've not done, is this no bus bar cover over this live copper bus bar. That is definitely worth a mention on the ICR. The main supply cable is an SWA or steel wire armoured. It should have a proper gland or at least a compression gland to secure it in place. That's a C3 for me. Another undersized link in the neutral bar here. Improvisation gone wrong. They've coded this loose cable above the board as a C2 as well. It's not live and in my opinion doesn't even deserve a mention on any EICR. They've used this pipe lagging to protect the cables coming out of the board here. Not a professional way of doing it. I would say it's a C3. Those cables could get nice and toasty in their warm cozy sleeping bag. But the biggest issue here for me is the massive hole they cut in the side of the board to run the cables through. Overall, DB5 isn't as tidy as DB4, but still could be a lot worse. We don't know which circuit is DB4 and which is DB6. We're gonna turn off the one that we think is DB6. Hopefully that means the kitchen board will stay on DB4, then we know which one's which. Yeah, okay, so this board's still on. So that means that circuit one is DB6. DB6. Yep. Jordan come rushing in down the corridor to show us what he found. Look at that smile. I found the bus bar cover. It was wedged in the back of the board cover there. So that's one C2 fixed. That zappy's not even level. Look and they've the just cable. bodged the, they just bodged the cable in. Oh yeah, nice, nice like, nice big hole under there. 
Welcome to DB6, the old barn. It was at this point that Lee discovered something truly horrific. Actually, that extension leads wide into one of the breakers, isn't it? See the flex at the bottom? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, nice. A customer was behind me and being the mean person that I am, I gave him this knowing side. look. <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. That is the most classic homeowner <laughs> DIY. <laughs> okay. This is exactly the kind of DIY bodgery we see from IT nerds and electronics engineers who think they know what they're doing. Fortunately, the customer swore to me it wasn't him, and I must say, I do believe him. The fact that a blank is missing in the consumer unit has been noted by the previous electricians as a C1. I would have to agree, but it's an easy fix, so the fact that it's stayed like that for five years is pretty sad. Welcome to DB7, the plant room. You can see the confusion here. The person before clearly hadn't labelled what was feeding what. It's all this say RCD by window. Small barn lights, small barn sockets. No, I mean. This wall DB6 goes back to the sub mains. DB7 goes back to the sub mains. But then it looks like there's another board, which is a free phase, which we haven't found yet. Maybe it's coming off this free phase, so let's go search for that. Again, the labelling was completely incorrect here, and Lee was left slightly befuddled. DB right hand oh. side, but on here it says DB left hand side. But then that looks like that. It says DB sevens fed from the sub mains. <laughs> How bizarre! That's wrong. They've labelled this as DB six, but in the sub mains DB six is on a single phase. Ah, so, uh, so this is DB seven. DB seven. Yeah. And then that is fed off of that. So DB six must be that single phase in that barn. What a mess. Although a lot of the installation was fairly neat and modern, it was becoming clear that some serious relabeling was in order. A little tip is that cables, armoured cables, usually have writing on them, identifying the actual size of the conductors within. Let's see if I can check if it's a 16 mil. There was no writing on this particular cable, so we decided to use the very technical method we call switch it off and see. All right, do you want DB6 turned off? Yes, please. Yeah, that's it. Yep. So this eddy's been turned off because they said it keeps tripping or something every time they use it. So we'll investigate that, but first we'll just turn it on, see if we can update the firmware. We go to system and then download firmware. At this point I decided to head down the driveway to see what was inside the furthest barn. There were a few surprises in store. So you might be wondering why are there so many distribution boards throughout this property? Well basically it's just because there are so many different outbuildings. And it's actually good that each outbuilding has its own distribution board where all the local circuits are fed from so that if there's any issue here you can quickly isolate the main switch for this particular building. The wiring in this barn was a little bit dodgy. Everything had been wired off a double socket which could get overloaded and catch fire. This is why it's important to always select the correct containment for the environment you're in. So the customer's got 32 327 watt panels for a total of just over 10 kilowatt peak of solar with a 9 kilowatt three phase solar edge inverter. But there's a problem. It doesn't seem to be set up properly. These optimizers allow the power output of each individual panel to be separately optimized and monitored. I'll show you what it looks like later in the Solar Edge app. This is a big no-no. Mm, wiring an eddy off a 13 amp plug, not good. It should be off a double pole switch, 20 amp rated. At this point, I realized the firmware update was taking forever. So I came up with a cunning plan. There were three Harvey devices connecting to this SAPI, the two from the solar which were doubling up the readings and the one for the grid CTs which should never have been installed in the first place. So this Harvey, I think the original installers fitted it, but they put it inside the consumer unit and it's metal so it creates a Faraday cage and the signal won't go out. Really dumb. So obviously then someone's come along and gone, oh we'll fit a Harvey here instead. And this one has just been disconnected from the system. So it's not in use, we're just gonna remove it from the board and tidy things up a bit. The thing about this is this is a bodge as well because all of these single insulated cables should not be exposed. That should have trunking lid on, but someone's had to take it off to fit the Harvey. So what I would recommend is the Harvey stay there, but the CTs get wired through into the board and clamped on there. And that way you've got the best of both worlds. So we're comparing now the Solar Edge dashboard with the My Energy dashboard to see why the figures aren't lining up. Solar Edge says that 
They've generated 1.73 kilowatt hours of energy today and they've consumed 54.1 kilowatt hours of energy. However, the My Energy system says they've generated 2.1 and they've imported 105. So My Energy is telling us that they've imported double the amount of energy that the Solar Edge system thinks that they've imported, which means there's a problem. In the Solar Edge monitoring app, we can see exactly what's going on in terms of how much power the system is generating, how much of that power is being used by the house, and how much, if any, is being exported. We can also see how much power each panel is generating at any point throughout the day. Right, so I've taken the tape off these CTs and you can see that they've actually doubled up the cores and crimped them together. So we're going to cut all this off, redo it nicely and also the zappy is the other side of the wall and the grid CTs for that is actually on a Harvey and it should be hardwired so I think we're going to ditch that, drill through and just run a hardwired connection straight into the charger. At this point, Lee gets bored of labelling stuff and decides to bring out the big boy tools. This is what happens when you don't use the Hilti Neuron impact driver you've been given. Let's see if Lee has mastered the skill of artisan angle drilling. You're just behind some plastic. Yeah, just keep, keep drilling, mate, and you'll come through the plasterboard. Not a bad shot. Installing this short bit of Cat5 data cable will allow us to hardwire the CT clamps that monitor the whole house usage rather than relying on the wireless signal from a Harvey. I asked Lee to push a cable rod through, but instead he decided to be lazy and just use the drill bit. Right, let's have a laugh with the boss. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Got it. Nice. Okay, well, that'll do, that'll do. I did hear him the first time. That'll do. It's fascinating to see the abuse people give you when they're hiding behind a wall. Does anyone else drink their coffee like this, or is it just me? Here I'm adding a rubber insert to my stuffing gland, which will give a better compression onto this smaller diameter cable. Here I'm just selecting three pairs from the data cable and these will go back to each phase of the main tails. Once I've terminated the plugs on, these simply just plug into the CT connections inside the Zappi. So it's been three hours since we set the eddy to update and it's only on 23%. That's because it's so far from the hub. The signal is so weak, it's just taking forever. So we're going to unplug the hub, plug it into this and then bring it right next to the eddy and that'll update much faster. It's super fast. The thing with this is it downloads the, the firmware from the internet onto this device and then it has its own signal that transmits from here to there. So you don't need to be connected to the internet with this to upload the firmware from this to the eddy. Data cables through the wall from the Zappi. So I'm gonna get the little whisker box just mounted here. I'll get these CTs onto the grid for the Zappi and then we'll just do the same for the solar stuff. If you look carefully, you can see that Lee has actually been getting hairstyling tips from David Savory. He appears to be secretly growing a huge mullet. Does anyone know where you can get spares of these from? It would be really handy to have a little stash of spares for all the different board covers. The amount of times you get screws that are just trashed or they get lost. Look at this mess. That is what someone left connecting up this Harvey and they even removed the lid on this trunk in so they could clamp round. I'm going to take these away, drill through and then connect them in the board and then that lid can go back on. Strip the cable and terminate into the back of the Harvey. Clip your CT clamps around the cable with your arrow pointing in the right direction. In this instance we want to point the arrows towards the breaker and that's going to be the current flow from the solar panels into the board. After a couple of attempts, Rocky Balboa managed to get the trunking lid back on. The Harvey is self-powered, meaning it draws enough power from the tiny amount of current generated by the wires passing through the CT clamps to produce the signal needed to communicate with the Zappi. Once all done, just make sure the Harvey is still paired to the other devices. So we fixed that mess and everything's reading perfectly. We'll be back here for a massive EICR and we'll probably film it, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> <laughs>